Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. You can live. You can be with your bees. Read it adventures. I'm so glad that you guys have joined me today. Thank you to the people who are watching me on YouTube. I see Bryson and Kendall. I see Mom. I see Julian. I see Casey. Hi, guys. Hi, great ones. Hi, great ones. How are you guys today? So glad that you guys are joining me. As we wait just a couple more minutes, tell me what you've done since you've been home. Hi, Riley. Hi, I see Jonathan Singer, where are you from? Where are you from? Oh, I need to get this one here. Oh, uh, Miss uh, Barani's class from, I know you guys are right outside of Chicago. I forget where. Thank you guys for reading me, reading about me, and thank you for joining me. Hi, hi, hi. Everybody, I want you to tell me something that was exciting for you today. I'm going to wait about another minute before I go ahead and read my book. Tell me something that happened for you today or that you did that was really exciting. And while you guys are doing that, I'm gonna pull your comments up on my phone so I'll be able to see everything. Evanston, that's right. Yes, yes, Lincoln Elementary. Hi, Lincoln Elementary students. Hi, thank you guys for joining me. Thank you, you guys are great ones too. You're second grade just like my students are second grade. Do you guys, I think you guys have some snow up there, right? And you said you're getting some cookies? You're less brown. Julie, what do you mean you're less brown? What does that even mean? I don't know. Hi, Janicia. Hi, Miss Verani. Thank you for sharing the article with me. I actually read it to, with my students today. It's pretty cool. I can't remember. Is it News Ella actually took the Washington Post article about me? And they leveled it. And I'm like, wow, never thought that I would be reading about myself. So at the end, I always use something. And I say, I want you guys to think of something that you're happy about. And I want you to think of something that you did that you are proud of. I am really happy that the Washington Post decided that they wanted to feature me. And that Newzella, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Change that so that it is at the reading level of children. That for me was like. Oh my gosh. And Ms. Varelli shared it with me. She said that she read it with her second grade class and she shared it with me. And today I read it with my students. Hey, great one, Christian. Hi. I see Lily Weber. Where are you? Where are you guys coming from? Where are you coming from? And I'm asking everyone to share something that happened to you that was exciting. I shared my reading about myself with my students. So what's something that happened with you guys? that you are excited about today. Thank you. And like I said, Ms. Varani, thank you for sharing that with me because actually I wouldn't have known anything about it. Did I say can't? Did I say can't? I teach my students <laughs> not to say can't. And I actually just did a presentation to other teachers about that. And I see one of my great ones said, do not say can't. I don't even know. <laughs> what did I say can't? What did I say can't about? I don't know. Kendall, what did I say can't about? Tell me that quickly so I can get started. You can't see my shirt. Okay. My shirt says, me love books. If you think about Cookie Monster, he always says, me love cookies, me love cookies. And this one says, me love books. You guys on YouTube can't really see it. There it is. Me love books. Thank you, Casey, for telling me that you guys couldn't see my shirt. Let's try to get it so everyone can see it. You had a dance with your mom. Hey, Lizzie. I still wanted to know what I said. Um, can't too. Kendall, what are you talking about? You're excited to be off work this week. I guess that is something to be excited about. So what are you going to do with your time? You can't remember, you just said can't. You told me I can't say can't, and then you said I can't remember. So I'm gonna turn it right back to you. Can't say can't, Kendall. All right, tonight I am gonna be reading a nonfiction book. What does nonfiction mean again? Help me out, nonfiction, what in the world does that mean? Hey, Maxton, 
what in the world does nonfiction mean? Does that mean that it's going to be a book that is real and has facts and has photographs? Or is that a book that's going to be fake where someone just used their imagination like Dr. Seuss to create things that may not even exist and they're going to have drawings and not actual photos? What's that going to be? Thank you. Thank you for loving my shirt. While we are reading, I always give you guys the uh, strategy of using the pictures. And yes, we're going to use the pictures. Yes, I've covered up the words because I want you guys to focus on the pictures. Using the pictures is a very great, good and great strategy for teaching you guys to understand the book. The illustrator who makes the pictures spends just as much time in creating those pictures or illustrations or photos to tell the story as the author does with the words. So you need to take the time to actually read those pictures. You need to make connections. As you're looking at the picture, what does it remind you of? Does it remind you of something that happened in your life? Then that will be a text to self-connection. Does it remind you of another book that you've read? That will be a text to text connection. Does it remind you of something that's happening in the world? That will be a text to world connection. That's a strategy that's gonna help you to understand the book so that if I were to ask you questions or if you're taking a test and the, the, you had to answer questions, you can think about those things. I also want you to visualize. I want you to make the picture in your head. I want you to think about what would it feel like if I were here? Would I feel cold? Would I feel warm? Would I feel safe? Would I feel scared? What does it smell like? Can you smell hmm, popcorn? Where might I be if I'm smelling popcorn? Or can you smell pine? I smell so much pine. Where might I be if I'm smelling pine? I want you to think of what can you hear? Do you hear who, 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 who? Where would you be? Would it be in the day or would it be at night? Or do you hear, ah, 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 what else do you see if you hear that sound? Where are you? What else might you hear there? What do you think I did see? Well, what do you see? If I were at the place where I heard, ah, 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 I see a rooster and I see chickens, and I see a cow, and I see a barn. You need to do all of these things when you are reading because that's going to help you to understand the stories. Someone had popcorn flavored marshmallows. I don't even know what, I, I can't taste them. I connected from last year to Nyla High. I still miss you. I miss you. I miss you. Thank you so much, Morgan, for putting that link in. A link has been put in. I offer tutoring services. If there's anyone that needs tutoring, please click on the link right there and message me and I can help your child with tutoring in reading. Or if your child needs to be motivated because you see this energy that I have, I can help you that way as well. So the nonfiction book that I'm reading tonight has been donated to me by Bell Weather Media. And it is, we're gonna be comparing two animals. The last time that I read a book from them, it was an alligators versus crocodiles. And lots of you were able to tell me the difference. This time we're gonna compete, be comparing, hmm. Well, both of these animals have fur. Both of these animals have sharp teeth. Both of these animals have sharp claws. What, I need predictions. Prediction is when you make a really good guess. If your prediction is right, great. If your prediction is wrong, great. Just be bold enough to make a prediction. So I said, has fur, has sharp claws, has sharp teeth. What two animals might I be looking at? They live in warm climates what do you guys think hi kira 
They both roar. <laughs> what do you visualize? What do you see? Beaver and otter. Once I give you this hint, probably we'll be able to predict more correctly or more accurately. They both have spots. What do you guys think? Tiger, tiger and what? Tiger and lion. Okay, it could be that. Hi, Jack from Ms. Verani's class. Tiger and a lion. Could be. Okay. Are you guys ready to see the book? Cheetah or leopard? Look at the pictures. Cheetah or leopard? Does anybody know where we can find these animals? Jaguar, that was good. Cheetah, yeah, you guys did a good job of predicting. Where would I find these animals? Which Valerie one here? She's from Africa. Cheetah or leopard? One of the ways that you can tell that this is a nonfiction book is because we have photos. In fiction books, fake books, we usually have drawings. In nonfiction books, books that are real, we usually have photos. This is a real photo. This is a real photo. So is this one. Africa, yes, yes, yes. Hi, Millie. Thanks for watching. Another feature in a nonfiction book is the table of contents. The table of contents lets you know if you are looking for specific information. Maybe you just want to know, hmm, maybe you just want to see these two cats side by side. And if so, you would be in the first, second, third, fourth chapter. Chapter four, and you would go straight to page 20. Maybe you wanted to know the difference between the cheetahs and the leopards. So you would find the words cheetahs and leopards. This is the first chapter, chapter one, and you will go to ch page four. We're going to read the entire thing. But before I start, can anyone else or can anyone tell me something else I would find in a nonfiction book? I've got the table of contents. What else can I find in a nonfiction book? That's not going to be in a fiction book. What else? Hey, Jaden. Hey, great one. What else? I know you guys are a little bit behind me, so I'm going to go ahead and hopefully someone will tell me. Glossary. It's a glossary. And a glossary is what I call a mini dictionary. It's going to have words in here, words that are going to be in this book that are related to cheetahs and leopards and it's going to tell us what those words mean oh yes glossary kindle great 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 which one is this i covered it up do you already know you can just make a prediction something i would like for you guys to do good readers take notes as i read about each of these cats I would love it if you would take notes. And then when we get to the end, you can just look down at your notes and you'll be like, able to say, oh, this one is a cheetah because, this one is a leopard because, get a piece of paper real quick. Get a pencil real quick and take some notes. That's gonna help you with answering the questions. I see you guys are saying this one's a leopard, 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 leopard. Why, how do you know, how do you know? How do you guys know? You're cheating somehow. Cheetahs and leopards, I'm trying to make sure both cameras can see. Cheetahs and leopards are both big cats. That's one way that they're the same. They are mammals. Oh, this word is bold. Mammals. Oh, that's right. I can go way in the back of the book and find the glossary, the little dictionary, and I can find out what a mammal is. It's an ABC order. A, B, C, D, E, F, D, H, I, J, K, L, M. Oh, there it is. M. Mammals. Warm-blooded animals 
that have hair and feed their young milk. Well, that's what a mammal is. Great ones from today. We read about a mammal today. What was it? They are mammals with spotted fur. How do you guys know that this one? A lot of you guys said that this one was the leopard. How do you know? More spots. It has large dots. Spots. Well, this one says that both have spotted fur. But with the large spots, okay, maybe. I saw the leopard in the tree on the title. Oh, someone's using the pictures. So you're saying that since this one is in the tree and it says leopard here, and this one is in the tree, you're saying that it's a leopard. You're using the pictures. All right, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. We did read about a beaver today. You were right. This is when you can confirm your prediction. You can say, yes, I was right. And Kendall told me how he knew because of using the pictures to see the leopard in the tree. Pictures gives you lots and lots of clues. Is this the same animal? If it is the same animal, tell me how you know. If it is not the same animal, tell me how you know. Both cats live in the grasslands. Look at the picture. You don't see many trees there. That's why it's called a grassland. They hunt other animals. How can you tell them apart? Is this the same animal? Well, Kendall said earlier that the leopard was in the tree. This one isn't. Is there anything else that you have noticed just by looking at the pictures that's different? I'm not going to tell you yet. It's a cheetah. Lily is right. Julian is right. Oh, Julian says more spots. Anything else that you can see? Guess what? As we read, we're going to find more details. Hmm. Rosettes. Rosettes. What's a rosette? Cheetahs have right dark spots. Are these spots round and dark? Is this a cheetah? Or is this a leopard? Are these spots round and dark? Leopards are covered in black rosettes. Oh, it says rosettes. This must be the leopard. Well, it is in the tree again. This word is bold. I need to go to that glossary. Let me go way to the back. The words are in ABC order. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R. There it is. Rosettes. Spots in the shape of roses. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Does this look like a rose to you guys? I didn't know that these... I didn't know that their spots look like roses. So even I learned something by reading this. So the leopard, take notes. The leopard's in the tree. The leopards have spots that look like roses. Let's see what else we're gonna find out. Which one is this? Look at his face. That's black lines coming down from his eyes. Does it have spots that look like roses? Can't really tell, but is it in the tree? Black lines run down cheetah's faces. Oh, that's the cheetah. Take a note. You should make a T-chart. Those of you in my class know what that is. For other people, a T-chart. Do I have a marker? Yes. T-chart. Go like this. On one side, you can write cheetah. On the other side, you can write leopard. And then you can start taking notes, black lines. From eyes. Row sets, you can write over here. You start taking notes like this. When I ask you questions at the end, 
you'll be able to just look at your notes and say, okay, I know the difference. Cheetahs also have smaller jaws than leopards. So they're showing you the dark spots and they're showing you the, oh, wait, I don't see the spots. This is the leopard. Can you see the difference in the jaws? Can you see that the cheetah has a smaller jaw? Which one is this? Based on what you know, and what we have already seen by looking at the pictures and study, which one is this at the top? Which one is this at the bottom? Look at your notes. Leopards are larger than cheetahs. Cheetahs are thin with long legs. Thin, long legs. Why do you guys think cheetahs need long legs? What do you know about cheetahs? Why in the world do they need long legs? Pray. Sorry, Casey. Different lives. This is going to tell me what is different about them. This next area is going to tell me how they're different. Pray. You already know this. what this one is. First off, it's up in the tree. Second, I do not see the black lines coming down. Both cats are predators. Predators. Let's go back to that glossary, that little dictionary. Animals, no, that's prey. Animals that hunt other animals for food. Oh, that's why he has this animal here. You can tell what that is. He hunted the other animal for food. Leopard store prey in trees. Cheetahs eat right away. That's a different. The leopard is going to take it up in the tree. And I guess eat part of it and save some for later. But the cheetah eats his right away. Let's see if there's another way that they're different. Which one is this? Is it up in the tree? No. Does it have the rosettes? The spots that are shaped like roses? No. But it does have the lines. What is this, guys? It's a cheetah. Cheetahs hunt during the day. Leopards hunt at night. Well, that's something else that's different. One of them is nocturnal. Being awake during the night is called nocturnal. Does anybody know the word for animals that hunt during the day or awake during the day like us? What's that called? That's called diurnal we are diurnal we are awake during the day and we sleep at night animals that are awake at the night like this are nocturnal visualize if you were out there watching this cheetah I'm, at, I'm sorry this leopard at night what else would be out there what else is nocturnal what else would you see what else would you hear i immediately hear Grasshoppers and crickets and toads. I hear. What else is out there? Which one is this? The face. Look at the spots. Are you still taking notes? You should have diurnal for the cheetah and nocturnal for the leopard. Cheetahs run fast to catch their prey. Leopards hide and surprise prey. Which big cat is this? Cheetahs run fast to catch their prey. I just showed you the answer. Because it says leopards hide. It's not hiding running fast. There's your answer right there. We always say, go back and find the answer. 
go back and find the answer. I went back and found the answer. Now, let's look at the difference. And you tell me, which cat is this on the left? Which cat is on the left? Look at its spots. Look at its legs. Look at its face. Look coming down from its eyes. Which animal is it? Just looking at the picture. Which one? Hey, Ariana. And hunts during the day. If you took notes, you can look at your notes and you can tell me. You speed to hunt. Eats prey right away. Which one is that? This one. Look at the spots. Bigger. Kind of looks like roses. It doesn't have those long skinny legs. It's a bigger, fatter body. No lines coming from the eyes. Hunt at night. Uses strength to hunt. This one uses speed. This one uses strength. High prey in trees. Which one is this? Did you say this one was the cheetah? Did you say this one was the leopard? If so, you were right. Round black spots. Black rosettes. Black face lines. Small jaw. Large jaw. Thicker body. Thin body. Did you guys get it right? Thumbs up if you were right because you used your notes and you were able to say, yep, this one is the, what's that again? Oh yeah, there's the answer. It's a cheetah. And this one is, what's that again? Oh yeah, there's the answer. It's a leopard. Did you guys get it right? Yay, if you got it right. This just shows you the glossary again, which is a small dictionary. It only has words listed that we read about in the book. Here are some more fun, more fun facts. If you want more information, Fun Surfer, and it says funsurfer.com gives you a safe way to find more information. So if you want more information, you can go to funsurfer.com. Looks like I got just a little bit carried away and my time is up. So I do want to do happiness and proud of that I do every week. Thumbs up if you like this book and if you learn something. Thumbs down if you like me, share me. Uh, that was pretty boring. I really knew all of that stuff. Okay. Like I tell you guys every day, every week, I want you to think of one thing that you are happy about. One thing that if you're sad, if someone hurts your feelings, if someone doesn't want to play with you, if someone is being mean to you, if someone is even laughing at you, you can think about that thing and it, it's going to make you smile. And I want you to lock it in your head. Then I want you to think of one thing that you did that you were proud of. Something that you can look at yourself in the mirror and you can say whatever your name is. I am so proud of myself for. And I want you to lock it in your head. So you should have the thing that you are happy about. And you should have the thing that you did that you are proud of. And you should lock it in your head, lock it in your head, lock it in your head. Inhale. Exhale. Smile. You're beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you for all the times that you have come. I hope that you found something that you really enjoyed tonight. If there is something that you would like for me to talk about, please send me a message and I would definitely do it. If you really, really, really like this book, you should have already given me a thumbs up. But you could also tell me that you like the book and you can tell me what you liked about it. I do have some homework for you. Homework. Uh, homework. Yay! It's only going to make you better. The more work you do, the better you're going to get. The better you're going to get, the better you're going to get. So your homework. Tonight, 
before you go to bed, do something to make someone in your house, your house smile. It could be giving them a compliment. It could be telling them that you love them. It could be giving them a hug. But do something before you go to bed to make someone else smile. And not only that, I want you to do something tomorrow to make someone else smile. Because when you do something that makes someone else smile, it's going to make you feel good on the inside. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I want to see you guys here again next week for my newest reading adventure. Tell your parents to join me on Sunday. On Sunday, I have a tip for parents. Tuesday night is for you great ones. Sunday is for parents for me to tell them something that they could do to help themselves be better and to help you guys be better. Because after all, we're all great ones and we all have something special on the inside of us that we need to share with the world. Thank you guys. Good night. My great ones and I'll, in my class, I'll see you guys tomorrow. My other great ones, I'll see you guys again next week. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, bye, bye.